one new NSW researcher has his way, the next big step for mankind will be mining on the moon. The moon has an abundance of rare earth materials that are essential for building high-tech devices back here on earth. It also has an abundance of something called helium-3, which in theory could be used to make gas propellants to ship things back to earth. In effect, we could create our very own lunar gas station for future space explorers. But how does one mine on a planet that exists entirely in a vacuum? Well, Leonard Bernold thinks he has the answer. We need to find a technology that is lightweight. It doesn't require bulldozers and trucks because this is too heavy. We can't move it. It's too economically impossible. So I'm looking for a lightweight way of mining the moon that also requires little energy. His idea is a closed pneumatic system whereby minerals aren't extracted by digging, but by suction. So I need to design the system that the lowest amount of air, the highest amount of material for this kind of pipe. The rock is sucked up and pushed along by gas pressure. Eventually, this will lead to a filtration unit where the rock is separated and diverted to a processing plant and the gas is recirculated and reused. All this will be predominantly automated and operated by robots. But that doesn't mean the moon won't be populated, in Leonard's vision anyway. What we see here is a pressure test for a special kind of brick that can be used in housing for lunar pioneers. In this kind of an environment, you have to protect the, your body against radiation. That protection will come in the form of concrete covers over pressurised underground housing. The concrete in development at UNSW is a blend of lunar soil, or regolith, and a special polymer that replaces the need for water. To start off with, we had to create a simulant, and we created Australia's first lunar simulant. Uh, we called it ALS-1, and that was a basaltic-based um, material. Uh, we sieved it through different grades uh, of uh, material, and then we mixed that in a certain ratio to create the simulant, which uh, was de is designed to mimic the, the physical and mechanical properties of lunar soil. My approach to this is to do the research necessary that we can go and build on the moon and have no big surprises. But to do anything on the moon requires energy, and that's where Aaron comes in. He's developed a novel way to store solar thermal energy and what are essentially blocks of cooked regolith. So using this material, I dry it out in an oven and then uh, put it into a crucible where it's heated to over a thousand degrees and it centers it into uh, a solid block. So from there, I take the material uh, and measure the thermal properties of it. Though still an undergraduate, Aaron was invited to present his findings at a major space conference in the US. There was quite a large number of people from NASA and the European Space Agency, as well as different research institutes in America and all around the world. Projects like Google X, a well-resourced race to land rovers on the moon, could mean lunar mining is a reality as soon as 2016. My goal is to ramp up my research, get some funding, uh, to be there when they're landing and say, I have something for you that you could use to do the next step.